welcome. Uh, the, web, the title of the webinar is Manage Your Online Community Efficiently with Seamless Platform Integration. Quite a long title. We'll explain a bit later what uh, this means. In fact, uh, I'm Stefano. I will be your host today. I'm the Customer Success Manager at uh, Open Social. I'm responsible for uh, explaining to our customer what Open Social does, how they can do it efficiently, how they can maximize the usage of the tools that they, they, they buy. And uh, uh, I'm also responsible to make sure that they create successful platforms, uh, not just at the beginning, but especially months and years after they started with the project. Joining me today, we have uh, Marcelo Correa. Hi, Marcelo. Uh, Marcelo is the head of Drupal product at CompuCorp. Could you maybe please uh, introduce yourself and telling us uh, why you're joining us today? So, well, thanks everyone for, for joining today. Uh, yeah, as Stefano mentioned, work at CompuCorp as head of Drupal products. Uh, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, well, based in London now, but well, originally from Brazil, uh, probably more than 15 years of experience in the area now, working yeah, from big uh, companies like Hewlett Packard to smaller ones or startups like CompuCorp. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, at CompuCorp, we have been working for open social uh products for, for three years or more now uh but yeah probably more closely with the open social team for uh, for most of this year uh yeah to share some of the yeah, work we have been doing for integrations right salesforce cvcrm that i'll be demoing uh, uh today and more recently even microsoft dynamics uh yeah so very happy to be here yeah, to presenting here today and yeah hopefully by the by the end of the at the web now you guys have a better idea on how to yeah, integrate your community platform with your CRM and how this can help your organizations. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marcelo. Really helpful. Uh, I want to go through the agenda really briefly so people know uh, what is going to happen. We will have a, a brief introduction now about open social, what we are and what we do, uh, a bit about integrations and what we challenges do we have integrating different system on open social, but in general as well. A demo from uh, from Marcelo as he explained uh, just now about uh, a different uh, integration that CompuCorp is making. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end, about 10 minutes, depending on uh, how curious you guys will be. And uh, and then I will wrap up and uh, uh, welcome you to the to the next webinar next time. So without further ado, we can start. Uh, I don't know if every, everyone that is here today uh, is actually familiar with open social. So I would like to spend a couple of words on what we, who we are and uh, um, what we do. So we are uh, a SaaS company and we are based in the Netherlands. So I've seen someone from, from Amsterdam. We actually have an office in Amsterdam and also one in Enschede. Uh, we are specialized in online communities and uh, membership management solutions. And we are serving some of the biggest international NGOs as clients. So we have uh, UNDP. Recently, we started with the European Commission. We worked together with Greenpeace for many, many years and Pachamama Alliance, uh, amongst many others. Uh, we place uh, sharing at the heart of everything we do. This is, became our motto uh, in the beginning of last year, uh, because we think that sharing is what makes a group of individuals to turn into a community. Uh, and the more people share their goals, their innovation, their knowledge and stories, they become uh, a unified community and then they can really achieve anything they put their mind to. You notice this more and more, uh, especially during Corona time, tough times, but uh, communities move really online and uh, uh, we try to, to help them with, uh, with our tool and with our solution. Uh, we offer organization as a, as online community software solution with a focus on uh, member member engagement and management. And uh, maybe it's interesting to tell you why organization like this uh, that I just named uh, like to come uh, and work with open social. Oh, there are, of course, different reasons, but uh, um, probably, as you know, uh, organization like this have uh, multiple communities, communities of professionals, stakeholders, employees, volunteers, you name it. And they need to find a way somehow to, to connect and communicate with, uh, uh, with all these people and to manage and engage uh, also remotely, uh, as I say, especially in this, uh, this past uh, few years. Uh, we often see that this, the part of uh, this digital transformation uh, is, uh, is shifting more and more online. 
and uh, online community helps the organization to, to do all sorts of things, that, to drive the digital transformation, of course, but also to manage the community more effectively, act effectively because they have finally a place where they can communicate with each other easily. Of course, there have always been other tools. You can do it on WhatsApp. You can do it uh, with other social medias, but those are not tailor-made for their necessity, uh, like open social can, uh, can do at the moment. Uh, it is easy, much easier to, to bring people together in this way uh, online and activate them, engage them, and drive organizational um, to reach organizational goals. So this is in a uh, few words what Open Social is trying to do, and this uh, is doing successful for the past few years. Uh, now I want to talk about what we are actually going to uh, discuss today. So more about the integration uh, between platforms and how this can help or should help uh, organization create and manage their communities better. So uh, we offer uh, uh, many organization and communities uh, um, uh, the possibility to integrate uh, different systems. Um, we already have um, uh, integration with Office 365, MailChimp, Zoom, and many others that I will uh, explain to you in, in a few minutes. But why are integration so important? Why we think that that's a necessity and that's the direction we want to, to go with open social and with our solutions? Well, going digital has a lot of pros, like I mentioned before, but also quite a few downsides, especially if you already have your own um, website, your own tools, your own, um, your own software that you're using to manage your company, of course, your organization, your, uh, your, uh, your group of people. So uh, adopting new tools, new platforms could become overwhelming. Uh, efficiently and efficiency can drop because your workflow becomes uh, too complex or uh, managing uh, the communities. Um, it could be dif difficult because two systems don't talk to each other and you actually have to do more manual work than having a uh, lower amount of platforms or lower amount of software. Uh, Adopting new tools is always a pain, of course. Learn, having to learn how to use something new, uh, having to teach your own um, managers, your own um, members, your own users, how to move away from something they know to something new is always a process that takes a long time and you risk to lose a lot of members in the process. Uh, sometimes data get lost, of course, because these systems don't talk to each other and uh, there is no synchronization. So either you do a lot of manual work or just you end up with uh, information in one system and not in the other. So all in all, this could potentially create a very messy solution and create more work for people instead of uh, removing it and helping them. So the goal of uh, uh, this digital transformation is also to make things more efficient and easy, easier to manage. That's why we came up. Uh, we came up with some of the integration that I already mentioned. So, uh, Office 365 we used for single sign-on, and we are expanding it to uh, to also use it for um, uh, synchronize the, the workflow uh, between Office 365 and our communities. Um, Mailchimp, of course, to uh, to send newsletters, to send um, emails, uh, much easy, easily via the platform. And this Mailchimp is a tool that a lot of uh, um, companies and organizations use already. So it was an easy choice for us to, to integrate with the system. Uh, Zoom, we are doing this webinar in Zoom. And now we, uh, since a few months, we actually offer it um, as part of our events, um, uh, events on the platform. So you can easily just create a Zoom link and the user can share it. The user can join it and do it directly inside the platform. Uh, we have more of this. We are more of this in the making. Um, please stay tuned. Some, from time to time, we have uh, roadmap webinars where we explain what's coming up in the near future. So if you have some, uh, some questions, please ask. If you want to know more about what's coming, we can always um, come together and, and discuss about it. But now let's move to topic of the day. You can see in the slide, we have a logo of CVCRM is one of the integration from Corp Corp. We also, uh, we also are going to talk about, uh, Marcelo is going to talk about Salesforce and he mentioned that uh, they also have a Microsoft Dynamic. So please, Marcelo, I give the stage to you. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot, Stefano. So let me share my screen. Uh, okay, can you all see my screen? Yes. 
Stefan, yes, perfect. Thank you. Uh, great. Yeah. So yes. as Stefano mentioned at the beginning, uh, yeah, we're talking about challenges of, of integration and the way that, yeah, we thought about this, they'll be doing uh, splits in two parts. So the first one, uh, yeah, the challenge itself and hopefully some of these things will resonate with issues you have in your own organizations. And then, yeah, more at the end, they'll be doing some demos uh, showing, yeah, how integration could help you uh, yeah, to solve some of the, or tackle some of the issues you, you may be, be having. So uh, great, but one of the things that I want to, to talk about is why you, you need to have integration, right? And wow, over, now over 70% of organizations are using almost entirely cloud options in 2021. So it's quite critical to be thinking, yeah, about uh, how these platforms will interact one with, with the other. And when we talk with different organizations, right, what we see that many, many of these platforms, they are interlinking in, in function, but isolated in practice. And that's probably kind of crazy to think about because yeah, imagine you're trying to I don't know, launch a new product, new organization, and then, but yeah, your different departments are not talking uh, to each other, right? And you can probably imagine that, yeah, a lot of opportunities will be missed. Uh, there'll be a lot of repeated work, uh, most like a lot of heat work and yeah, just time wasted. And, and the other thing is that IT leaders, they are becoming more conscious about yeah, how integration is important. And 85% are saying that integration challenges are hindering their digital transformation efforts. Uh, but what are these integration challenges, right? I think, yeah, Stefano mentioned some of them, but yeah, what I have prepared uh, for the next four to five minutes, it's just yeah, probably the most common ones uh, that we have seen happening, the different organiz organizations that we have been working with. So to start here, well, probably the, the most common, right? Data quality issues. And yeah, anyone who has worked with yeah, database, probably you'll be very aware of this issue. And actually it's estimated that between 25 to 30% of data becomes inaccurate on a yearly basis, uh, which can make your organization lose up to 20% of the revenue. And yeah, probably you don't, you, any, no organization can lose up 20% of the revenue, right? So that's that's quite a, a big, big, big issue. And what the integration can provide you is uh, what is known as single source of truth, right? So you have, instead of looking at different uh, multiple contradictory sources, you have everything in one place, uh, which is like your master data. And then this from that, you can just copy to different uh, other platforms that you may have. Uh, and the second thing is time consuming tasks. And yeah, that's one that's ever present, right? When you are talking about organizations that have different uh, digital platforms, because uh, it's, it's quite likely or it can happen that you end up with people having to move data from manually from one platform uh, to the other, which is quite a tedious process, right? And in fact, 50% of employees time is spent doing mundane data tasks such as this. So imagine what you could be doing if you had all this time freed up, uh, yeah, just to, to work in, on different projects. If, if, if nothing else, at least would be much more enjoyable uh, than just, yeah, working in manually moving data from one platform to the other. Uh, and the third thing here is, yeah, about poor service. So we, we mentioned a little bit about, yeah, data uh, quality or data fragmentation, but one of the real issues with that is that your organization probably will be providing an inferior service uh, when interacting with your members or, or users. And yeah, uh, research should say that 77% of individuals are more loyal to organizations with good service, right? And probably, yeah, certainly true about my own experience and I would imagine uh, from yourselves, right? But yeah, if I uh, have interaction with a company organization that uh, has a good service is more likely that I'll be doing repeated business and try to avoid the ones that don't offer a good service. And integration again is one of the ways that can help you uh, to tackle that because uh, you could have a full 360 degree uh, view of your customer. And if, if you have a good uh, implementation strategy, right? So for example, if someone calls uh, uh, your office or your support team uh, to, to address an issue they have, 
uh, probably be much quicker and you show that you have a greater knowledge of the history of, that they have of your organization and hopefully uh, giving a more personalized uh, service and actually also building this loyalty that you want to have with your members. And, and the last one here that, that I want to mention is about track engagement. And yes, yeah, so this is very important as well. And I would also say a more advanced one, right? But uh, it's very important to get yeah, membership organizations or membership communities, right? But it's certainly and definitely not easy. Uh, it's not a straightforward one. Uh, but again, the integration uh, can help you with a, a centralized place that you can consolidate all your data. So instead of doing endless spreadsheets uh, to try to analyze the data, you have everything in one place with purpose built reports, right? So instead of, yeah, probably everyone has been there where you spent, I don't know, minutes, hours trying to put together a spreadsheet by the time that spreadsheet is, spreadsheet is ready, probably that data is outdated already, right? Uh, and you need to, yeah, uh, take another export from different platforms and, and so on. And of course, there's issues that can happen because, yeah, this is our manual process and, and so on. And, and if you think about uh, integration between your CRM and a community platform, uh, yeah, there are probably a few things that you, you could start tracking, right? So number of groups, the number is of, uh, number of groups being created in your community, uh, number of your members who are active in the community platform, but also the yeah, number of activities that each of your members are doing. And then of course, tailor uh, cons and special uh, yeah, activities or tasks that you want to, to send uh, to these members. Uh, cool. So now they have, we have covered the four most common issues. So uh, data quality, uh, time loss, poor service and track engagement. I'll move to what I hope is the most exciting uh, part of this webinar, uh, which are the demos. So I have prepared four different videos uh, for this and each one for different user story, uh, some very basic and maybe in you know, others kind of probably more niche, but hopefully it give you some flavor of the things that you could uh, uh, be, be doing if you had your platforms integrated. Uh, cool, so what I have here, this is the first one. and. Uh, so the idea for this one is you have your member signing up, uh, which could be your membership offer, not necessarily the community platform, but let's say your membership organization, they are signing up for your membership offer. And as you probably expect, right, record is automatically created in your, in your CRM. But uh, as part of the sign up, uh, the user can also opt in to be a member of your community. And if the user sign uh, opt in, what you see is that yeah, you can automatically create a user in well, Open Social, uh, write the correct set of permissions there. So I'll just play this video, move it to full screen, and just yeah, guide you guys through it. So yeah, here what we have I was saying this is just a very simple uh, sign up form, right? So I'm just uh, filling some information here, uh, and I'm choosing my membership type here already. And then I'll, I'll show why this is important later on. And yeah, I was just saying, then here the member is saying, I want to opt into the community platform and submitting. Cool. So once this is done, and now I'm just, well, maybe for some of you, this is the first time seeing CVCRM. So all the demos today, uh, you'll be using CVCRM, but of course, could be with Salesforce Dynamics or any other uh, CRM that allows to integrate with. and. And yeah, so what I'll be doing here is just yeah, going to, uh, to search for this user who just has signed up for my membership offer. And yeah, so which is myself. Uh, and you, as you probably expect, right, you have the, all the information that has been filled in the sign up form. Uh, and also, yeah, work email address. And you also have that, that he has opted in for the community platform. And in body what you have here, is the same status of this record with your well, with open social. So you can see that it's synced, uh, when it was last updated, when it was last synced, and also the open social ID. So you can just uh, uh, refer to a record in open social if you need. And because this member has chosen to be part of your community platform, now, sorry, yeah, for the ones of you who never 
have used open social now have just moved to open social and as an admin user again uh and just showing here that yeah now marcelo has been created uh here with the correct roles so the set of permissions are already correct i don't need to do anything uh the information that was in the sign up form already here again nothing that your uh, staff needs to do and similarly to what you have in CVCRM, here you have the, the sync status for this one record. And, and just one more thing here is that in open social, you could also, uh, if you have, of course, the correct set of permissions, you could see all the, your users and what's the sync status. So yeah, if you want to check, I don't know if there is anyone who hasn't synced or you go to your CRM and you see that yeah, the information is not matching, most likely there was a sync error and you could just come here and see the, the status of all uh, your users. Cool. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the idea here is to show how much time could be saved, right, for, for your staff and but also, yeah, for your members. And of course, the, the, the issue of data quality, the, everything synced between both platforms, actually between yeah, the sign up form, your CRM and, 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 and open social. And, and there is no admin time here at all. Everything happened in the back end uh, or in the background uh, and got synced automatically. Cool. So what I'll be doing now is moving to use case two. So same member, he has signed up for your membership offer. Uh, and what's going to happen then is that he's going to automatically receive an invite for the community so he can set his password. Uh, I'm also going to show that he can create a group once he's set up in the community platform, add a member, and then again, everything will be synced to your CRM. And as now we are collecting all this information for a community platform, you can start creating mailing lists in CRM based on your members' interest. So, so let me play this next video. Great, so here's just my yeah, Google account. I have received uh, an email from OpenSocial uh, saying that account was created for me. I'll just copy the link and, and paste on a different uh, browser. And yeah, and then here's just yeah, very simple. Uh, message right saying that uh, this is a one time login. Uh, and yeah, we probably expect my emails are right there, the username, and yeah, just going to set now my, my password. Uh, yeah, you, of course, you could set different uh, email notifications if you want, but that's not the focus of today. So I'll just skip and save. And great. So yeah, what we shown here, right? So in less than I don't know, like a couple of minutes, your member has signed up for a membership offer, but it's already logging in your community platform as well. Uh, as I have shown before, if he goes to his profile, all the information is there. He doesn't need to type everything uh, again. And of course, you could collect more data during the sign up form if you want it. Uh, and, and here, just going now to, to create a new group and show how it works on the other way around. So from yeah, your community platform to your CRM. So just going to create COP26 group, just adding some information here, description. Uh, maybe we can skip this a little bit. Probably don't need to see me typing. Uh, just setting the permissions here. Okay, just location. Cool. And yeah, one thing here that support to mention. So here you can set yeah, your tags for the group, right? So this is a environmental uh, group. And yeah, what you see next is that, yeah, based on the information that now I'm collecting here, I'd be able to create my mailing lists or in, 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 your, in the CRM. Great, so what I'll be also be doing here, just going to add an extra member. Uh, um, yeah, hopefully most of you are used to open social, so this is, uh, I think that you already know, but I'll just skip here. And okay, so my group is now created. And what I'm just going to show is similarly to uh, people or the members of the community. 
yeah, you could also see the sync status for all your groups, right? Again, if you see that for some reason, uh, there are different information in your CRM and your community platform, you could come here and see what's the status. So yeah, here for a group we just created, you can see that has been synced uh, and no errors. Okay, so now I'm back to the CRM uh, and I'm searching for the group that I have just created it's already there. Um, just waiting for this one group to load. And you can see, yeah, here that, yeah, the information, well, probably is expected, right? Tags there. Uh, so this is an environmental group. Uh, what's the contact type? All the sync status, it's also there. Uh, and yeah, the group type here. And of course you could have many other uh, fields uh, based on your needs. And, and the last thing for this demo is just going to show uh, yeah, how now, because you, you are, your CRM is collecting this data about uh, people who are interested in environmental uh, discussions. I had created previously uh, these mailing lists here in the CRM. And yeah, just going to show that these two members who had just been added to this group that has just been created uh, are already here. Uh, so yeah, Marcelo Correa, uh, who is our new user, right? And, and Hanley Martin uh, is also uh, here. Cool. So just coming back to the slide. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, all these things were done without any work from your staff, right? From the point that the user has signed up, from him accessing the platform uh, to having the mailing list updated, Everything happened in the background with no uh, need to someone doing manual manual stuff. And also, it's a better user experience, right? Because as as I mentioned, like one two minutes after logging to the platform, he already received an email and he can log into your uh, to the community platform. And of course, you can have now comps uh, tailored to to users' interests, uh, which were mentioned uh, in your community platform. Cool. So the third one is probably yeah, the one that I was saying it's more maybe niche, but uh, it's ma imagine that yeah, you run your boards or committees on open social. Uh, and, but yeah, your staff maybe prefer to use your CRM to manage uh, group members because maybe the CRM is part of their daily routine and they just prefer to, to work there than opening the, the community platform. And, and, but also what they would like to do is create or edit members of a group in advance. Uh, and yeah, what I mean by advance, I'll probably make more clear now. Great, so we are here in open social, right? So I'm just showing that this is a board. So it's a closed group, right? No one can request to join. Uh, probably don't want your community to see that you have your boards there. Uh, but yeah, all the discussions that are happening, uh, uh, from your board, you can see, yeah, your members who are there. And, but what I'll be doing here, I just go now to the CRM. And again, I'll search for this uh, board here. So Springfield Board Committee. And again, same information that now you guys have seen uh, probably a couple of times. But what's new on this demo is this relationship tab. And, and what you can see here, it's all the members that are part of the group in an open social. But I'd say more than that, because uh, probably it's quite common for board members to have like a, a term, right? So they have a start date and an end date. So uh, Peter Shaw here, you can see that started October 19 and his end date is uh, October 21. And, but there's probably the election and then Rita Bond has been uh, nominated as a new board member and she's starting from October 21. Uh, so you could set these things here in your CRM and when the dates arrive, uh, yeah, things will just happen automatically in the background. So no, again, no need for you to remember to go there and, and, and remove uh, a board member and add a new one. And of course you could do all the management of group members from your CRM if, if you wanted. Uh, not only set dates in the future. Uh, again, yes, 
no problems with data quality rights. Everything is integrated between the platforms and reduce admin time. So just uh, saving probably quite a lot of time here. And, and finally, the, the last one is about uh, yeah, engagement uh, metrics. And yeah, so imagine you are someone who, I don't know, look after engagement in your community or, or maybe uh, churn of your members. And so you could have a dashboard created once you log into, yeah, for example, your CRM, there you can see different metrics over that and of course take uh, informed decisions uh, uh, to improve your metrics. So this is a quite simple one and a very simple actually uh, example here as well. But yeah, this is your dashboard in CV and you could create yeah, different reports here. So the one you see on the left is just, yeah. So from your active member, uh, what's the average number of groups they, they have joined in the community platform or in active, active number members, uh, what well, same thing. And then on the right, yeah, let's say here, we just had three members uh, uh, in your organization, right? But you could see the number of groups that they have joined uh, and what's the membership status. And yeah, probably, yeah, from here you can start uh, make some conclusions, right? So yeah, it looks like, yeah, if you, if the, the member has joined more groups, uh, it's more likely they become, or he'll be active uh, with his membership. So yeah, how you increase then engagement or how you make members join more groups. So you avoid uh, people churning uh, from your organization. Uh, cool, and then yeah, of course, just yeah, improve your, how you track engagement and hopefully uh, offer a better and tailored service to, to your members. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, these were the four use cases that I had to show. Uh, of course, there are many other uh, things, but just, yeah, because of time, uh, this is the four that we wanted to show today. So I guess I just stop sharing my screen now. Oh, and back thank to you. Cora. Thank you so much, Marcelo. It was amazing. I learned a lot myself, and I hope uh, all the people joining also had the same uh, reaction. Um, I haven't mentioned it before, but uh, uh, of course we work with uh, CompuCorp as a partner and we work with also many other partners. Maybe someone wonders why we don't uh, build certain things in-house at Open Social. Well, because of this, because we uh, like to work with people that have certain uh, set of expertise and they work with specific technology on a daily basis and they know best what, uh, what uh, certain things are. Uh, uh, how certain things need to be done and uh, how they can work with open social. So we rely heavily on, on this expertise. And uh, as you can see, we made a good choice with, uh, with CompuCorp. So thanks, thanks again. Uh, and now, of course, we can take some questions. Uh, while you were talking, I came up with one because I, um, you, you were very focused on all the advantages and that's amazing. Of course, uh, I also mentioned what the, the saving of time and. Um, making the life easier for uh, for people in the organization, but I'm sure that you end up with some challenges while you make these integrations, CompuCorp, but also uh, users. So, how does CompuCorp manage to work around these challenges if you, some of these challenges are actually happen happening? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, when yeah, we start an integration project, what we usually see uh, probably say three main challenges. Right, one is, yeah, what to integrate. Uh, yeah, if there is any data migration and probably, yeah, to go live. And yeah, it's probably quite common that, yeah, when you start and yeah, and then the client will just say, oh, what do you want to in integrate? Well, everything. Uh, and yeah, then of course, probably you really don't want to integrate everything, right? Uh, you need to, because, yeah, we, we have seen cases, yeah, I don't know, a contact in the CRM, I don't know, in, in, in Salesforce at 150 fields. You probably don't need all of these in your community platform, right? You probably just need 15, 20 maximum. Uh, so yeah, identify and work with, with yeah, the clients. Uh, uh, what are the real things that, the things that will bring real value uh, by being integrated, right? So what, what probably, yeah, what sex looks like or what's the outcome that you want to have from this integration. And then, yeah, prioritizing 
uh, based on, on this, instead of trying just to integrate everything just for the sake of integrating. And yeah, and then the other thing is data migration. Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. Data migration is never easy. And, and especially, I guess, when you talk about community platforms, because you can have data on, on, on different uh, formats, right? Uh, yeah, it's important to, to understand again what really makes sense to, to migrate and but then just prioritize what's, what's important to have. But again, uh, what we usually do in this project is that we, um, I think it's just about practicing, practicing, practicing. So when it goes to the go live date, uh, you're not doing yet yeah, the data migration for the first time. You're just repeating something that has been done a uh, couple of few times before. So yeah, just make sure that of course during the go live, right? You, not, no one is changing any data, but it's probably just uh, replicating a uh, process that you have created in, in the past or during during the project. And hopefully, yeah, it won't have any issues. And and yeah, and then the go live itself. Because uh, yeah, I mean, you can probably try to cover all the issues can, that can happen with integration, but uh, yeah, in the end, I think, yeah, one thing is practice, other thing is, yeah, it's going live, you can start receiving, yeah, type of information that you have never received before. And then, yeah, you just need to, uh, to adapt and, and to find a solution for these things. So yeah, what we tend to do is, uh, yeah, be, be, be very close with the clients when, when we are going live, uh, and just make sure if something happens, uh, we are there to, to, to try to find a solution. Oh, thank you so much. And we have a question that I am just reading in the chat. I think it's quite similar to what I want to ask. So uh, is there a magnitude of potential members of the community that justifies CVCRM? And I imagine also uh, Salesforce or uh, Microsoft Dynamic. Our current community is about 1,500 members of a rurality community, a rural community. I think the maximum member possible may be 2,500. I'm not sure if you go through the challenge of integrating a CRM. What is optimum? Uh, yeah, I mean, integration can sound complicated, but can be simple at the same time, right? Because it depends what you want to do. So if you just want to, I don't know, have understand what your members are interested in uh, so you can send better uh, comms to them, then I guess you could just integrate uh, your members' information between both platforms and make groups. But yeah, if your members are showing their interest in their own profile, I guess all the information that you need is in the user's profile. So you don't need to go integrate you know, events or, or, or groups and members of groups and, and than any other entities. So you can make it very simple. So I, yeah, probably it's more about not yet yeah, the number of members you have, but yeah, what are the things that you like to, to do with, with the data? And then, yeah, then just trying to, to work together uh, to, to find the, the best solution. Because uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, we've seen cases, yeah, that's just one entity in just one way, it's a very simple integration and that will be sufficient. But for other clients, yeah, they can say, no, I need to integrate three different platforms. Uh, we need to have a Chrome job running the background because we have this third platform that needs to be in the middle between the CRM and the, and the community platform. Uh, yeah, we need to have two, two way sync integration. And yeah, I mean, you can make as complex as you want, but as simple as you want. So yeah, probably start with, uh, yeah, the basics of really want to do. And then, yeah, you're getting value and maybe you're seeing your members more engaged because you're having more tailored information about them or seeing the tailored comms or doing more uh, the things that, that engage them more. And then you can probably start adding more and more uh, things to your, to your integration. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, I have another question for you. Before you say that uh, not everything should be integrated, so not every system, but... Uh, uh, how can an organization decide which system to integrate and which system to keep separate? Is there a guideline or is something that uh, you normally uh, come to you as a to consult on this? What uh, how the process works? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to what I was saying. It's all about 
what you want to do with the data that you start collecting, integrating, right? Uh, and yeah, and and just understand what's important for, for you. And then you see, yeah, what you need to integrate and what, what you don't need. Uh, that's why before, start integration itself, I would say that it's quite important that you have some time to do a discovery exercise events. I don't know, it's internal, uh, just if your team or if a provider to help, but planning the integration before I start doing probably is the most important thing there. So then you have all the areas of your organization together and you can uh, see the different opinions, the different needs, uh, and then plan around that. And then once you know what you want to have out of this, then you can start saying, okay, so I need to integrate the CRM, the image platform, I don't know if any other uh, platform you, you, you have, and these are the entities that I need, these are the fields that I need, right? And so yeah, probably spending a good amount of time in the beginning uh, is the most important thing there. And then, yeah, the, the systems that you need to integrate, you just come naturally. Okay, well, thanks, very clear. Uh, I don't see any other question in chat. I have one more, uh, but if, uh, oh yeah, there is a, I see, I see a hand in the chat, but uh, okay. Yeah, a uh, question is coming. Uh, I feel like I understood the details of the integration well, but I'm missing some of the larger picture. First off, am I correct in assuming that the advantage of using CVCRM to manage your data instead of Drupal is that it is harder to integrate other software like MailChimp directly to Drupal? But it's easier to do with CVCRM. And then regarding CompuCorp role, is the integration between open source and CVCRM so complex that it needs integration experts like yourself to come in and make sure it all works as intended? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, go with the second question first. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, can be, as I was saying, can be complex, but what CompuCorp comes to help is, you know, of course, one is the experience that we have integrating with other clients, but and also the the expertise of yeah of doing this yeah before and having the right tools. Uh, so it's not something that you cannot build yourself, right? Open Social is is open source. CVCRM, of course, is open source. Uh, Drupal is open source. Uh, so yeah, all the things you you can do it by by yourself, but it's just because. Yeah, we have been working with CV for the best part of in the last 10 years or so. Uh, open social, yeah, for three years or so. So we, we have done this before and yeah, we can uh, uh, help you. And sorry, the first question. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think MailChimp and, and uh, and, and CV, they they are they have different goals, right? Uh, Mailchimp, it's probably just yeah about uh, sending uh, email communications, right? From or mainly these and and CVCRM, it's it's much more than that, right? You can yeah create events, you can uh, control donations, uh, memberships for your organization, uh, manage volunteers. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a real CRM, which I understand Mailchimp is more focused on the email marketing campaign side of things. Uh, so I think it's just two different uh, things, and of course, depending on what are your needs, probably Mailchimp would be enough, and you don't need CRM. Maybe yeah, then yeah, depends on how many. Is that the same person? No, it's a different person. Yeah, so depending on the size of your organization, maybe yeah, Mailchimp would be enough. You don't need the CRM. Uh, but yeah, I would just say that they are different platforms for, for different goals. Yeah, I think it also connects to the previous question, right? If there is a size of a community that uh, justify the cost of having a, another a CRM, because uh, Drupal, of course, open social can uh, manage a basic CRM a functionality like management of users, but at some point, maybe a company uh, needs uh, feels the need to, to integrate uh, CVCRM, Salesforce, or something else, or maybe because they are already using it in, in their company, so they have 
the expertise, the, the, they know how to use that, and they attach uh, community software like Open Social to, for their for their community part and uh, the members. So to be both ways, and uh, definitely having a conversation with uh, with uh, with us at Open Social or with you at, at CompuCorp to suggest uh, uh, if this is solution for for the needs, I think is a perfect starting point, of course. Awesome. Oh, thanks for the compliment. Thank thanks to you, uh, Marcelo. I think we, we are at the end of our webinar. We are uh, just one minute too late. Uh, uh, on the slide, you can see uh, my email address. You can always reach out directly to me uh, or uh, Marcelo, of course, if you have more questions, you can always go to getopensocial.com and uh, um, sign up for a demo. If you want uh, to, to, to even have more information there, we'll be happy to, to set up some time with you. And uh, I hope you, you had uh, a good time. I hope everything was clear. And uh, I see you next time, Marcelo. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Next time. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank Have you a great day.